Amen. We are glad to be in the house of God this morning because this is the place, this is a time where God speaks. And today we have a breakthrough service and we believe that God will speak His word into your life that will produce a breakthrough, that will produce progress, that will produce a movement forward. God says in His word that His word when it goes forth it does not come back void and produces fruit. Amen church. As we heard a testimony, uh, Pastor Martin was sharing of uh, Genesis of uh, just last breakthrough service as we were praying you know she had no hope of graduating she didn't even buy her gown and her uh, clothing for graduation because she surely thought she was graduating until after the breakthrough service she got a phone call saying you graduated she had to put a rush order on that and she graduated for the glory of God you are next to be uh, promoted you are next to graduate you are next to receive increase in your business if you believe it shout amen before we dive into the Word of God, I want you again to those of you that are new, uh, those of you that uh, are first time guests, uh, if you could please fill out one of these connect cards, we would love to connect with you. And after the service, our pastoral team and our leaders will be out there up uh, on, in the lobby. Uh, and we would love to meet with you. We would love to get to know you. We would love to, uh, and you can give that card to us or one of the people uh, on the back there at the table on the left. And we would love to connect with you and just to hear your story. And so come on, let's put our hands together for old time, for new time visitors today. With that being said, we have a little time left. I want to dive right into the Word of God. And um, today, I want to talk on... A subject called partnering with God working with God and uh, most of us are convinced that God has good plan for us amen most of us are convinced that God has a good thoughts toward us most of us don't struggle with the idea that God has good desire towards us and that God wants to do good things in our life amen but God's desire to do well in our life, God's desire to bless us, God's desire and even God's ability to do so doesn't necessarily reflect or determine that it will be so in our lives. Because it requires us to work together with God. It requires us to partner with God. It requires us to do something on our side to do something from us God wants to change our life God wants to do work in our lives but he can't do it alone and God only works in partnerships otherwise he would have created us as robots as machinery without free will only fulfilling a certain function in society and that's it but God gave us free will God gave us desires passions he gave us talents and gifts he gave us the individuality and he wants to partner with us to fulfill the goal the dream and desire in your life can i hear an amen, amen. open with me first corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 and we're just gonna read few words and you're familiar with it and says this for we are laborers together with god say with me say for we are laborers together with God uh, in another uh, in another uh, translation says for we labor for for we laborers with God or another translation says we are co-workers with God you know what the co-worker means co-worker means that someone typically who works on a uh, in a similar role or in a similar similar level in the organization so think about this for a moment similar uh, similar role or similar level God has given you an opportunity God has given me an opportunity he's raising us up from where we at to work with God on his level to partner and labor with God to do and to accomplish things in our lives in our business, in our family, in our marriage, in our city and in our society. If you think it, it's pretty actually amazing. It's a privilege to have God as a partner. 
I know in church many times we toss these words around really carelessly and very loosely but think about a God who created a universe, a God who has infinite wisdom, a God that has no beginning and no end, a God who can measure the universe with this palm of his hand, a God that spoke everything that you see into existence, a God who gives wisdom and revelation to all the people that come up with these crazy inventions that we have today. You know that even for example, um, what's the table called in science? Peri periodic table, there you go. I knew something had to do with period. But you know that the person that came up with it, he didn't even just come up with his own wisdom. He just had a revelation. He came to him in a, in a dream, in a, in a vision. A lot, of the, a lot of the mysteries in the world that's been unlocked, they've been unlocked almost accidentally in a sense but it's God who revealed the mysteries of this world and that's why the Bible says the hidden mysteries of this world and we have a privilege and honor to work with this God you know just to bring it down to earth to help us understand because I know it's difficult to wrap our mind around this greatness and this magnitude of God but think about it if in your life in your business in your finances since we're having a breakthrough service we're talking about finances today if you had an opportunity to get a Bill Gates as your partner or, War, or Warren Buffett as your partner or any of those rich people that have access to all kinds of resources all kinds of knowledge and practically unlimited capital I mean think about how much further you would be in life if you get to be at least spend two years alongside and utilize their resources, utilize their wisdom and utilize their capital. How much further your business would be, how much further your career would be, how much more you would be able to accomplish in a short span of time simply having an access to these men. God is much bigger than man. God is much greater than man. His resources are much richer. His wisdom is infinite and we have a privilege and honor to be partners with that kind of God. You know sometimes when I pray and I ask God for things and I stand in faith for certain things and it's almost like feels like you're begging God and squeezing. He's this poor guy that has two pennies left and if he gives you one he's gonna have only one left. And honestly that's kind of sometimes how it feels like and those kind of prayers God can answer. When we pray and we come before God we have to come boldly knowing that he's able and willing to fulfill every desire and every need in our lives and he has abundance of things and if he gives us something then he won't be short on things and when we pray we have to pray and come and approach God with that kind of mindset God does not work alone he requires your input he requires your creativity he requires your effort. He requires your desire, your passionate desire and your faith. You have to work together with God. You know it's like a, it's like a crane. Um, imagine big massive cranes and now they have such a big cranes. I had a picture but forgot to uh, post it up on next service. I will. There's this world biggest cranes. It's, it's so massive and it can lift a crazy amount of weight. If it would be for humans to do it on their own, they would never be able to lift that kind of weight with any amount of people uh, trying to lift it. But because in partnership together with a crane, with an equipment, a man can hop into this cabin, small tiny cabin with few buttons, few level ears and they can push on things, pull on things and together with the crane they can move literally mountains and they can accomplish tasks that would be impossible otherwise and they can do it quickly. When we work together with God we can do things that would have taken six years and six months. Come on, do you receive it this morning? There's three categories of people in this place and honestly in this world. Uh, 
their first category of, of, of people is people that work without God and they rely on their own strength they rely on their own wisdom they rely on their own uh, resources and they work and do as much as they can do they work hard and many times without no success many times they fall short and they get discouraged and they stop and they accept their life to be as it is I guess that's all I can amount to I guess minimum wages that's all I can do maybe uh, just a little bit more and that's all I can do maybe having a small business and and be self-employed this is the best that I can maybe having only two workers in my business or five workers in my business and do a little local place do a business locally this is as far as I can because this is as far as my abilities my resources and connections allow me it reminds me a story from the Bible Peter before he knew Jesus he's fishing he's fishing all night they're fishing with the net the Bible Peter says to Jesus that we work hard all night he says we toiled all night we came empty and then Jesus comes on the scene he says Peter go back into the ocean and toss the net on the other side Jesus said Jesus you don't understand we're fishermen we worked all night with our partners and everybody came up empty what do you want what do you understand about fishing business but because you said so I will do it Bible says he goes throws the nets and they catch abundance of fish that the nets begin to break and the boats begin to sink that they have to call in for help that's the difference working with God and working without God same amount of effort same amount of knowledge same amount of desire and passion but when God when you do all that you can and then God comes in and puts the starch of supernatural and God comes in comes in and partners with you you go to the next level there's another type of people in this place and in, you know in the world they expect for God to do all the work and it sounds something like this well if it's God's will for me to have money I will have money well if it's God's will for me to get healed I will get healed if it's God's will for me to prosper I will prosper these are a bit extreme cases I'd say and it's mostly in the religious circles it sounds very spiritual it sounds very um like you're you're a your per, your person your spiritual person but it's a lie of the enemy because if God's will is for me to be blessed I'm blessed thank you God because it's his will but then if God if I'm sick well I guess what it's God's will for me to be sick I will accept a punishment or whatever people come up with excuses I will accept this as God wants to work on my character God wants to do this or do that he wants me to teach me a lesson he wants to this is a this is, a, this is the famous one he wants me not to have pride <laughs> otherwise I'll get prideful and these are the category of people that they expect God to do everything if it's God's will I will be rich if it's God's will what it's God's bill if he guides he will provide and what that usually means is that I'll if God opens the door I'll go through it but otherwise I won't try it and it's the lie of the enemy because then when things are rough in our life when we hit hardships in our lives we begin to blame God God why is this why do I have pain in my body God why is my marriage suffering God why is my family and my kids are doing these things God why am I constantly short with money why there's constant limitation God why I can't make ends meet in my life and God begins to be the person that we blame let me speak a little bit on God's behalf today and exonerate him from things God doesn't come in and bust the door open and says let me fix this mess and put your life in order that's not how God works God requires active faith God requires 
activity, effort. God requires desire from your heart. God requires your input. And He takes what you bring and He makes it better. And He does what you can do. He doesn't feed, feed multitude of people from thin air. He is looking for five loaves of bread and two fish. He's not looking for Peter for he's not magically having a um, fish appear in a boat in Peter's he sends him out to fish he's not magically supplying money for to pay taxes at the temple he tells Peter go and throw your pole into a uh, in, into the water and you will catch the fish and there will be a provision God requires your activeness God requires your activity. God requires your faith and He requires you to put an effort. He wants to work with you. And when things go wrong, before we blame God, we should ask God, God did I miss you somewhere? Did you, did you go a different direction and I continue to go this way? Did you stop and wait and I continue going on my own? Did I not do something in my life? Did I miss something? I'm not saying go and digging for sins. I'm not saying go and dig, go digging for things that you've missed because we all in perfect, we make mistakes and we always will find them. But I'm saying that if we genuinely from a heart tried, we put our effort, we did everything that we can, we, we, and, 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 and then we can ask God, did it, is there something somewhere what I've missed? God, give me guidance and guide me, help me to go forward. Because you now you can pray all you want to have a great family. But if you don't work with God, if you don't invest into your family, you don't spend time with your kids. Then why is God to blame when they don't respect you? They don't want to spend time with you when they grow up. If you don't work on your business, you don't learn different skills, you don't learn how to communicate, you don't learn how to manage, you don't learn how to uh, save, how to invest and then you come up short or you constantly can't move forward. Why is God to blame when you haven't done all that you can? A lot of times we like to quote the scripture, after you're done all you can, just stand. But a lot of us all we do is stand, we do nothing. All we do is sit on a couch and watch Netflix and eat chips and expect that we're going to become next millionaires because on Sunday Pastor Ilya said receive to be next millionaire and I said I receive and I prophesied and I declared and I made a positive confession and then occasionally here and there I started reading a book but I just got through chapter one and so God sometimes honestly we relax and we find ourselves in this category. It's easy to point fingers like, yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not there, no. But a lot of times in different areas, we might be working hard in business, proceeding, but neglecting this area. And then we're wondering why is it suffering? Or we're, we're putting uh, effort and time into, into this, uh, into family with kids, but we neglect our marriage and then we wonder why our marriage is suffering. Or this or that or whatever it is, God requires our active faith requires our action so he can work and move in our life amen church the third category of people is those that work with God those people that do whatever they can and God comes and does the rest it's those people that do the possible and then God comes in he does the impossible it's those people that work hand in hand with God they uh, they go pick, they, they, know, they don't just expect God to give them a raise. Yes, they're praying and believing God to give them a raise. But they go to college, they pick up extra courses. They, they get another degree. They get another certificate. They research. They go apply for another job. They, be, they work hard at their workplace. They become, they, they try to become a person of value. Something that they can bring extra to the company. They come in early, stay later. They put in more and they pray and ask God. And then God comes and does the supernatural. And then God comes and brings promotion. Then God comes and brings raise. Think about it. You're praying to God, God give me a raise. Give me a promotion. And then God just takes you the way you are coming late to work, leaving early, barely doing enough. 
and he takes you and he promotes you and he gives you a manager's position you don't bring value to work you don't know how to manage you never read a book about management you don't know how to work with people you don't know how to communicate you're going to be a liability to the business God's not going to promote you to cause somebody else's business to go down. Cause somebody else's business to be mismanaged. So when we pray to God, we got to put action to it. When we ask God to touch it, we have to work with Him. You know, the other day, this message, of, you know, I was speaking first to myself before I decided to bring here. And long... Uh, Long before, I was, I was praying and asking God, God, you know, expand my business. This year, God, I decree and declare, I believe I'm going to go to this level. I'm going to get this kind of money. I'm going to make this kind of money. God, please help me to, uh, please help me to raise, to raise capital, to enlarge my business, to do this, to do this. I believe it. I confess it. I pray it. And after I've done doing all these hoopa looptas, um, you know I had some extra time I sat down and, and God said I just felt it like just this prompting on my heart and God said like uh, well I would help you to raise more capital but you don't know how to raise capital I'm like well wait hold on a second I know things about business a bit here and there and so and, and as I started pondering you think God said like I would bless it if you start doing it but you know in a lot of areas about business Studied a lot, but this area of how to raise capital, you don't know. I started thinking about it. You know, actually, that's actually true. I said, Yeah, God, it's yeah, I guess you know. Um, <laughs> I've never raised capital before, never really had to. Um, so, yeah, and so God said, You begin to learn how to pitch your idea, you begin to learn how to communicate better, you begin to learn how to write better. How to write better proposals. You begin to learn how to connect with people better. How to convince people to invest into you. And I will open the door. Right then and then. I didn't even hesitate. I went. I bought top five books on how to raise capital in the business. I went and found audio books. Downloaded right then and then three audio books on how to raise capital. I went and found top podcasts about, uh, about businesses and how to raise capital. And I started listening and I started and I, as I was listening I started noticing in the recent proposal that I've that, that I've put put together so many holes so many mistakes like the do's and don'ts and I did the do don'ts and di did not do the do's <laughs> and so and I'm like okay no wonder people bypassing it don't get me wrong, God can do anything with anything. But that's when you came to the end of yourself and you just can't do anymore. But if you got, but if you got some room to go, you got some work to do. If you got some room to go, some place to grow, God wants you to grow. And God will bless you with the rest. Amen, church? Do you receive it this morning? You know, uh, the two people that really kind of inspire me, you know, first, uh, first one is, is my wife when it comes to parenting and, and, uh, and family. You know, to me parenting, I kind of grew up in that kind of culture, you know, I, you, you know, you saw your parents raise you, parents raise you well, you know, didn't complain, didn't die, didn't starve to death. <laughs> I got this. No problem, you know. You, you do the best that you can and that's it. See, my wife, my wife when it comes to this issue, you know, she's, she's different. She, you know, she wants to be the best kind of mom that she is. She wants to give our kids the best nourishment, the best care, and the best guidance that she could. And she always asks me, do you, think I'm, do, you think I'm, do you think I'm a good mom? Do you think I've done the best? And I always say yes. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the things that surprise me, you know, she'd order these books, you know, how to raise a child, how to uh, discipline a child, how to connect with your child. Um, I mean all these things and I'm like man how many things is there to a child I mean you just feed them change their diapers put them to sleep and make sure there's a roof over their head and no and then she would start sharing things hey I just read in this book and you know there are things that we're doing wrong and we gotta change it we can't talk like this there are things that we're doing wrong when she's upset 
this is the better way to approach it instead of saying no come out this way it's the same thing but accomplish differently it doesn't set the child against you you gotta do this you gotta do that and slowly but surely we're becoming a better parent but we could have just done what we've done and carried on with our life thinking we're doing the best that we can at the end of the day blame God why our family turned out to be the way it is I know it's not an easy thing to swallow today and I know a lot of us will look back right now and we, we find a lot of mistakes. And I thank God that there is grace to cover those mistakes. I thank God that there is grace to fill in the gaps where we fall short. And, 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 and God will help us. But when we, know, when we know when to do better, we got to do better. When we have to do our part, we got to do our part. No need to pay the consequences and no need to struggle through life. When God has made things available for us at church, in our home groups, on internet, podcasts and books that we could get through life with less pain, enjoying life and being blessed. Amen church? I know in olden days and our parents, they had no access to books. They had no access to seminars. In the case of my parents, you know, they were persecuted for their, uh, for their uh, relationship with God, for their religion and they had to run and hide. There was no time to worry about all these things and God gave grace to cover a lot of those areas. But now in this day and age, God requires our active faith. God requires our action. As many, uh, how many are receiving today? Um, Apostle Paul says this, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to notice one thing. Apostle says that I do all things not Christ not Christ I do all things but he strengthens me but he comes alongside and helps me but he takes me where my abilities end his opportunities begin he takes me from this level to the next level Apostle Paul says I do all things not some things, not few things. I do all things as Jesus Christ strengthens me. Apostle Paul goes on to say in Philippians chapter, uh, sorry, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 and 8. He said, I fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Not God, not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. I did as He strengthened me. At his, as He gave me grace. As He pushed me forward. As He blow the wind into my sails I can do all things through Jesus Christ God wants to be involved in your life today God wants to work but he wants to work through you not bypass you not do it for you what would be the satisfaction if things would get done without our without our work without the work of our hands God has created us to work with our own hands and we derive satisfaction from doing things and completing things. We derive purpose in our life, accomplishing things and working. And if God comes in and does all on our own, there'll be no meaning to our life. There'll be no purpose. God wants you to work with Him. God wants you to do the impossible. God wants you to do the things that you haven't done before maybe. Maybe that means for you today, going back to school. You make a decision to go back to school, you pray and God will give you the finances. We've seen that many times. Maybe God is calling you, you know, finally to start the business. That, that the business that you, He's put on your heart and He wanted you to do it. God wants to be involved in it. God wants to succeed you, to help you succeed. God wants to push you forward. You got to take risks and start. Maybe God wants you to start paying attention to your family, to your children to your spouse pay attention to your character you gotta start doing it today you gotta start working with God the time of waiting is done the time of standing is done first Apostle Paul says after you've done all you can then you stand and wait on God nobody has become a neurosurgeon by speaking in tons 100 miles an hour it required a lot of effort, a lot of studying. It required taking exams, 
It required to persevere. It required 10 to, tw uh, 10 to 12 years of, school, uh, of schooling. Then it required practice. Then it required continue on education and schooling throughout their career. It required probably 300 to 400 thousand dollars, th thousands of dollars to complete the schooling. It required something. And after you've done all you can, then God comes and does the rest. You know, we've heard testimonies in our ministry and in, in, in ministries in other ministries where honestly people will go ahead and go by faith and will go, go pursue a career go study and then you know they did everything they can on math uh, studying for that math exam studying for the chemistry exam or whatever and honestly after doing all that they can it just nothing stuck just didn't couldn't couldn't push through couldn't persevere done everything all the study and then during the exam or before exam God would just supernaturally come through and they'll pass it but that's when people have done everything they can they said God I will persevere I continue and honestly since you called me to do this you're gonna have to guide me through it someone said we work as if everything depends on us but we pray as if everything depends on God we work as if everything depends on God but we pray as, as if everything depends on Him. Today we're gonna pray. Today we're gonna, I know there's people in this uh, room, I know there's businessmen, pe uh, businessmen in this room, businesswomen in this room, there's people in their career. Honestly you've done all you can. You've pushed forward, you, uh, you, you, you studied, you finished a degree but you can't find a job. You're working hard at your workplace but you can't seem to be promoted. Somebody gets picked over you. To, uh, maybe there's people that you know you've, you've, you've done everything you can in your life but this just seems like setback after setback today we're gonna pray and we're gonna believe that God will put a touch of supernatural over your life today is the service of breakthrough and you will receive your breakthrough in Jesus mighty name you will receive grace to move forward God will open a door and you will move forward with him in Jesus mighty name I decree that and declare over you as we raise as we stand on our feet Thank you for watching and listening to this message. I know that it's been a blessing to you. Your faith has been stretched and you've been positioned to receive from God. We're about to go into a time of prayer where you will receive prayer for your current situation. I believe God will bring healing and God will bring freedom as you will pray along with us. I'm so excited to announce that I'm actually releasing a book called Break Free where I will share in the book of what we went through as a church, what I went through as an individual, as a pastor, as a minister, and how to find freedom and how to keep that freedom. And so on the link below, there is a link where you can find promotional material, you can share on social media and help to get the word out. I would really appreciate that. And right now, having your heart ready, let's go into the time of ministry where you will receive from the Lord. Right now we're going to go into and worship and then we're going to begin to pray. And then we're going to begin to get God involved in our life. And we're going to believe that God's going to touch your life, touch your situation, your business in Jesus' name.
to working with God. Begin to make that a declaration over yourself that you're going to partner up with God, that you're not going to just do it on your own, but you're going to ask God, give me strength. God, give me wisdom. God, give me knowledge. In everything that I do, I want to involve you. In everything that I, that I am, Father, I want you to be a part of it. Father, I am committed to working with you. Come on, open up your lips right now. Begin to declare that in your marriage. Begin to declare that in your family. Begin to declare that in your career, in your school. Begin to declare, Father, I'll involve you in my every decision. God, I, I, I want to partner up with you in raising my kids. I want to partner with you in getting my stronger marriage. I want to partner with you in my career. I want to partner with you in my school. I want to partner with you in my business. God, I am committed in working with you. Let's begin to pray that right now. Yes, Lord, right now we just come to you, Lord, and we need you. We need you in our business, oh Lord, in our education, Lord. We need you in every decision. We need your help as a parent, Lord. We need your help as a husband, Lord, to love our wives, Lord, to, to honor our husbands, Lord. I, I make a decision today, Lord, that I'm going to ask for your help. I'm going to ask for your wisdom, Lord. I ask you right now. Holy Spirit, anoint me, Lord. Anoint me to be a businessman. Anoint me to be a husband. Give me your wisdom. Give me your help, Lord. I realize that I don't want to even try on my own, Lord. I will do everything that you will require of me, Lord. But I will wait on the Lord because I know my help comes from you, Lord. I know I've done everything I can, Lord. But in you is my strength. In you is my wisdom, Lord. I will rely on you today, Lord. I make a decision to rely on you to be a better parent, Lord. I'm asking you to help me in my parenting. Help me in my relationship with my wife, with my supervisor, with my employees, Lord. I need you. Lord, be with me, oh Lord. Use me to bless others in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Right now in this prayer, I want us to come before God and say, God, today, Lord, I repent of every laziness. I repent of every passivity, inactivity, everything, God, that I just kind of hand it over, let life happen, let things go with the flow. Right now, begin to come to God and say, God, forgive me, Lord, for not partnering with you. Lord, I reject and I renounce every, every laziness. I renounce every passivity, every inactivity, every kind of no passion, just kind of flowing through life. God, I pray, Lord. Give me, God, that passion. Reignite me in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, begin to pray in that direction. Begin to for confess before God and begin to reject every laziness and inactivity in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you begin to forgive us. You begin to wash us with your blood of every inactivity, every laziness, every passivity, Lord. Everything that we, Father, just left undone. Everything that we abandoned because we got lazy or we, we didn't think we are going to make it through. We ask you, Lord, that you ignite and stir up the passion again the desire the hard work father the the, the um, legitimacy father to study to persevere to keep on going to to better ourselves to educate ourselves father we ask you lord that we begin to be the people who begin to toil who be hard working who will educate ourselves who better ourselves father in you in jesus mighty name we ask you lord that you're gonna give us a faith you're gonna give us persistence father that you're gonna give us a spirit don't not give up until we see it come to pass lord that we're going to make things happen, Lord, with you on our side in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now, we're going we're gonna to watch a short clip. It's about a minute, 30 seconds. A testimony, a prophecy to a person that constantly was losing things. Just randomly would lose things. And how God supernaturally touched his life and restored all the things that he lost over the years through this prophecy. Please play the video. Yes. that disappeared yeah i tried to work hard but everything is everything is gone yeah. i see you last year in december with two thousand rand you place it in a brown jacket you put it in the room and as you went to bed do you know what i'm talking about yes. yeah when 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 you wake up what happened my man disappeared i didn't see it again not only that it will never happen again but every money you lost the Lord is bringing it back to you. Receive it. Get it. When you go home, that everyone may hear that there is God in heaven. Whatever you lost, when you open your wardrobe, there is a black bag inside. Receive open it. it. You will get your 2,000 rand. You'll get your Samsung J7. You'll get your 280. You'll get every money. I 
command it to reappear. Glory to Jesus. Beloved Pastor Art was not trying to have this man up. A miracle will surely manifest. Here it is. So the things which, which, I was, uh, which I lost is this one. It's the jacket. And then the jacket is inside the jacket there is a phone. Even my attire for Rasta, you see. This is my attire. I love this attire, my friend. Money is this one. Everything is inside. My money is here. Everyone the like God this. I, I, I left my money like this inside my wallet and then God. I found it. So 1.8. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. We're going to pray right now for all the things that have been lost, all the things that have been stolen, that they will begin to come back into your life. God says, the things that were lost in your life to Israel, I will restore it seven times. In Joel, God says, all, all those years, all those years that locusts has been devouring your life, all of those years that can't come more and can't Kalapiro has been devouring in your life, your finances. I will restore it to you, says the Lord. In this testimony, it's incredible. This guy, over many years, this is, I just cut it. The testimony goes for 20 minutes. This, the, these are the things he lost over a span of three or four years. And as the prophecy came forth, there came a supernatural. He said, go back home in a drawer. The, 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 the drawer, the word closet, he, that, he opens that thing every single day. There was nothing in it. He's like, that's going to be a black bag. In a black bag, there's going to be coat that you lost. In a coat, there's going to be the phone that you lost. In a coat, there's also going to be the wallet that you lost with 2,000 rent. Then there's the 200 edgy rent that you lost the other day. There's going to be the clothes that you lost three years back. Everything that you lost last year. He said, it will be restored today. He said, it will never happen again to you. And God supernaturally supernaturally restore his life listen church this is what i was talking about partner with god you do all you can you heard his testimony he says i work really hard but the more hard the harder that i work the less i have and i know there's people in this place that you feel the same way i know there's people in this place you feel like man all oh, these years that i've put in the work i should be further than that god wants to touch you today god wants you to touch your situation today god wants to touch your business today he wants to touch your finances today in Jesus mighty name. Today is the day of breakthrough. Today is the day of moving forward. In Jesus mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say it with me. Say I command everything that was lost, that was stolen, be back in Jesus name. Say come back to me sevenfold in Jesus mighty name. Say everything that I've lost over the years in my life in my finances in my family so i command it to come back in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name right now in this prayer begin to command those things that you've lost in your life those things that are stolen in your life begin to command it to come back we you know one thing there's only one thief he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And right now in this prayer, we command it for the things to be lost and return back in Jesus' in the name mighty name. Of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm here to take everything back that was stolen. Right now, Satan, you are the thief. You are the thief. It's not the will of God. It is you, Satan, and I command you out of my life. Every thief out of my life, and I command for all the good things that God has given me, all the relationships, the businesses, the finances, the cars, the vehicles, the land, the money, the houses, the opportunities that Satan you have stolen are commanded to come back right now. My career, my education, all the contacts of people, maybe relationship with my children are commanded to come back now. All the things the devil stole from my marriage are commanded to come back now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, everything the devil stole from the relationship of my children are commanded to come back now finances careers education everything that i've lost through laziness everything that i lost through mistakes everything that was stolen to me i commanded to come back in the name of jesus god is my restorer and i declare right now by the blood of jesus in the name of jesus christ my life is going to be restored my marriage is going to be restored my relationship is going to be restored my finances will be restored in the name of Jesus. Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name we're not just praying prayers church I know and I've seen this over in my life in the lives of others 
it's, it's the thing is because we stop expecting God doesn't move but when you know what God can do and you expect and you believe impossible things will happen I believe that we'll hear testimonies of things that have been lost for years you'll find them and you will be returned to you in Jesus mighty name there's a personal testimony or in our family uh, my when my brother uh, Nazar got married he bought an expensive ring really expensive ring I told him it's too expensive uh, start off with something maybe less expensive and I grow up but he bought a ring he loved his wife very much fiance at that time he bought a very expensive ring um, and shortly into marriage she lost it I mean it was over 10 grand I mean she lost it for months she didn't have it she bought one of those cheap things for 30 bucks that looked good though and was wearing it when we traveled together with my brother to New York to meet with Prophet Shepherd Bushiri. Now he prayed a prayer and one of the things that he prayed over us in prayer, he said everything that's lost, let it be found in Jesus' name. He comes back home, him and his wife after one of those Sunday services go back, his neighbor comes out and he says, hey listen, by any chance you guys lost the ring? He says, actually yes, three months ago. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's about the time that I found the ring on the stairs. Brings out the ring and gives them the rain. Church, I know what I'm talking about and I've seen it in my life and I've seen it in the lives of others. God can restore things. Many scriptures in the Bible where He says, I will restore if you come back to me, if you submit to me, if you work with me. I want us to pray one more time. Whatever it is that you lost, right now bring it out before God. He said, God, you are a restorer. God your Redeemer. Come on lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands. Everybody, in, all the hands are lifted. Everybody in this place have things that they've lost. Begin to pray. Say, God, touch my situation. Touch my finances. Touch my business. Lord, I ask you restore. Restore God my family. Restore my marriage. Restore my finances. God, restore my business. Oh God, you are God of restoration. You are God that brings back sevenfold. God touch my life. Lord touch my life. Touch my family, my business. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Father, we ask you that you're going to restore the things that Satan has stolen from our lives. The time stolen, Father, relationship. The time stolen marriage. Time stolen business. In finances. In, in education and in school. We command it right now to be restored back to your children. Restored back to your sons and daughters sevenfold. Be restored in your situation. Be restored in your career. Be restored in your family. Be restored in your marriage. In Jesus' mighty name, Satan, we command to give back everything that you've stolen. All those years that you've stolen from our lives to be returned back to us. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And in Jesus' mighty name. I believe that God is touching your situation right now. And you're walking out with a breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe, shout amen. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.